uh, discussion period. Um, and um, Craig's going to be giving us some uh, information about the Castle 2 um, project and uh, focusing on estimation and inference. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, oh, there's all these troubles with this microphone set up, so I was thinking maybe mix it up a bit. Uh, yeah, I feel like karaoke, I'm just going to... Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm at the University of Auckland, but um, I've... Uh, for a few years there, I was um, heavily involved in Castle 2 development. Um, and, and so I think that's kind of the main reason why I'm talking about this, uh, well, this today. Um, and so the things I just want to go through is kind of the estimation that is in, uh, embedded in Castle and Castle 2. Um, and uh, also w w walking through um, some of the interface, which I know is probably more related to tomorrow's session, but um, an introduction. Um, and some of the ideas that we've kind of talked about during the week um, go into a little bit details. And then um, just some comments of my experience during the development um, process, which I think could be quite helpful for the idea of this future uh, beast uh, assessment tool. I mean, I was going to, um, there's a bit of divergence. I had a synopsis um, and I was going to talk about uh, my, some experience I had with Castle 2 and when, when I was involved in an abalone assessment, which was an ADMB model. But um, I think most of the points have been covered, you know, you know, some of the good things about general tools and, um, you know, I was asked, getting asked by the working group to add a new feature and then you turn around your ADMB model and how that can kind of be a bit dangerous, just the probability of bugs and, you know. So I'm not, I'm not really gonna talk about that so much and mainly gonna kind of focus on just Castle 2 today. Um, so, uh, yeah, th this is probably also uh, quite obvious and we've kind of talked about it during this week, which is, you know, why why are we doing, why did we start Castle 2 when kind of Castle was, is kind of adequate for a lot of our assessments? Like um, uh, some of our assessments, I guess, haven't have changed massively over kind of like the last 10 years um, or some of our age structured ones. Um, uh, but but the, main, uh, the main idea is, which is kind of what we've been talking about during this whole workshop is kind of, uh, future proofing the tool um, and so the obvious one we talked about modular um, you know le the concept of lego plugging things in anybody can plug a thing in it's independent um, you've got validated so if you plug it in it doesn't destroy your fixed generation of expected values um, and then uh, the the this uh, extension of the partition concept, which we've kind of talked about as well. Um, and uh, another one, which is the multiple minimizers, uh, having kind of a generic process model, which we've kind of written in C++ that theoretically you can kind of plug in any third party optimizer um, uh, was, was I, I think, um, one of the reasons as well. Um, yeah, so you're probably asking, you know, what, where, you know, where is it? Can we play with it? Um, uh, so this is the current, uh, this is the deadline in terms of having our version one released um, uh, so that you can download with all the documentation and, and um, yeah, our package and examples and user manual. Just uh, if that's an FYI. And if you have any issues, uh, or, or if you're interested, uh, it's just that uh, flick an email there. Um, so New Zealand, um, uh, a lot of our management and our stock assessments uh, were Bayesian. We uh, do kind of full MCMC Bayesian inference. Um, and, I, and so Castle 2, uh, there's, there's a lot of um, kind of concepts which I'm going to try and illustrate to you. Uh, you know, this idea of uh, a pr 
prior is associated to estimates. Um, and although in Castle there was a likelihood switch, where you go, yes, I want likelihood, and then it just drops out, you know, all your priors. Um, so Castle had that and kind of, you know, if you assume your uniform prior, I don't know if that's kosh, but your uniform prior and try and do kind of frequentist inference. Um, but uh, so often what we do, you know, which is probably common across for all of us, you know, you do uh, MCMC is too slow. Often, you know, all the hypothetical models that you could create, you're not going to run MCMC. So we do a lot of kind of uh, model configuration just using kind of maximum posterior density estimates and maximum a, well, a posterior. Um, and no, uh, so currently we don't support any of these uh, Laplace integration, <clears throat> integrating out. I think uh, one reason, because uh, Stan also, if you do, uh, if people are familiar with Stan, um, that also has an optimized call. And I don't think they do the, the um, they don't do the Laplace integration either because um, they need to generate the covariance for all their random effects for the sampler. Um, yeah, there, there's kind of, if you did do a whole lot of um, random effects models in kind of the frequentist framework, um, and then you want to, to try and configure your a stock assessment model, and then you wanted to run MCMC, there's kind of a little uh, discontinuing of like, if your MCMC algorithm depends on a covariance matrix, um, how do you get that out of, for all your parameters for your posterior? Um, yeah, so currently actually we, uh, Castle has a, a just a Metropolis Hayes, so it's quite a simple, uh, simple MCMC algorithm. Um, and so a lot of the work that I've seen kind of, I think Cole's been quite, Cole Monaghan's been quite good at uh, showing is, you know, as soon as we start going to these hierarchical models, um, we're going to need kind of some of these kind of more sophisticated um, MCMC simulators, uh, algorithms. Um, so I just wanted to show you kind of, um, we're gonna, I'm going to just walk through a little example model of Castle 2 just to show you the uh, interface. But I just wanted to show you uh, kind of how you define an estimated parameter in the, in the Castle and Castle 2 system. Um, and so, where are we? Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, so the, there's kind of a generic underlying system where almost any kind of container can be uh, can, in, the, in the Castle 2 code base can almost be kind of estimated whether you should or not. That's another point. But um, so currently you're going to have to set this kind of type, which is, you know, is this a log normal prior uniform um, beta, you know, you can put whatever. Um, and then there's this idea of sharing parameters. So in this example here, we're kind of just looking at maybe it's probably a logistic uh, survey selectivity for males and we're forcing the female A50 to be the same. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to just, just kind of illustrate, you know, there is kind of this underlying concept of a type, which uh, I think is tied to uh, the Bayesian kind of idea, but um, I could just turn them off. Um, and then that, uh, and just wanted to illustrate the share, sharing of parameters, uh, forcing them to be the same. Um, this is one of the, the multi, uh, multiple minimizers. So you could comment out any of these and run, you know, do, do an estimation, an MPT run, um, and then, you know, comment out that one, then rerun it. And that kind of gives you, I mean, we can have a discussion of, you know, whether that's useful. Um, I mean, it's, it's useful in terms of, you know, testing the robustness of your kind of minimum. Um, yeah, and I, and I also just wanted to, sh I don't, I sort of wanted to put up some code, I'm not too sure, but we have one single kind of code base and we have these, uh, uh, like these type def doubles. So basically everything in the code base is written as a double and um, how that's allowed us is that basically if you compile with like a ALC optimizer, then it converts it to the class that that minimizer can wants to deal with to calculate gradients. Um, 
and I, I just it's quite a nice very clean um, solution to having like a single code base but being able to port in um, you know currently got three auto differentiable libraries but code let's not worry about that <clears throat> um, yeah and so I just wanted to um, just quickly go over a model just to show because uh, on Monday we had um, our developer software developer Scott talking about these ideas and I just wanted to show you what that looked like for a user you know this idea this uh, model dynamic language you know where you can um, describe any kind of process and, um, and and how Castle 2 kind of compiles that behind the scenes but but what that looks like for a user. So I'll just quickly, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I think it's quite good to have a look. Is, um, I just, um, uh, what do we got? We got, a, um, so this is a, an example of a kind of input into a, a Castle 2 model. Um, so you can see uh, at, the, at the model, uh, you're talking about defining, um, you know, uh, the the, you know, the ages and the year you're running it and whatnot, um, and you also define your annual cycle. So in this case, uh, they've got what five uh, abstract time steps, and you can see how they've used kind of uh, the month range to. So you could obviously that's abstract. So you could say, you know, one week, two week, three weeks four weeks um, so so you've got this concept of the general annual annual um, annual time step um, and the other one I, uh, is the categories so this is you know we're talking about this general partition this general partition concept um, and and it's actually and we've talked about how efficient that can be you know in terms of your processes just they know what categories they want to pull out of the partition to do an operation on um, and so you can this is also kind of abstract as well and completely user defined so you could go species um, yeah and then you have to kind of obviously populate that out um, so that, that that was kind of one of the nifty uh, nifty thing I'm going to talk about the kind of the cons the cons of this super flexible configuration um, just in a minute but uh, one of the other things that we broke away from cut between castle and castle 2 was uh, castle had a predefined um, predefined order of op processes within a time step um, and so now um, now because you can for this time step here October November we've got a uh, western uh, two migrations and then uh, inst mortality, probably instantaneous mortality, um, but you could easily have kind of instant morta mortality first, followed by your um, uh, migrations. So it was kind of that was a nice uh, little break away from castle and castle uh, into castle two. Um, but I just also wanted to have a look at so in this case here, you know, in instant mortality. Um, there's diff Oops, what happened there? Oh, yeah, let's go off um, recruitment. Um, and here we've got uh, this recruitment, this process called recruit W. So it's a recruitment Bevan and Holt type. Um, and you can see, you know, these are the years. Uh, we, we standardize our years. Um, so that's uh, div dividing by the mean to force them to. Or, or dividing by the mean or the total to have so that they have mean one during a, a series um, but you could easily uh, just turn that into um, like a, a constant um, let's ig ignore that um, so you could easily just say you know I don't want to recruit and give whole I want constant recruitment with some R zero um, and so you, you just swap out um, you just change your process and so castle 2 has got the uh, dynamic building that when you run this um, it, there'll be a slight computational overhead about building the pointers as to 
build pointers now to instead of to a recruitment Bevan and Holt class, it points to a recruitment constant. Um, but there's um, that's but it's a very small computational cost, and then so you can have basically have you know if you think about it like that, you can have kind of like twenty recruitment modules sitting in the system in your source code, um, and there's very little computational cost um, from anyone to run any one model. And uh, so I just kind of wanted to illustrate, you know, that's how it's done in kind of Castle 2. And um, it's, it's uh, quite a nice solution. Um, so that's just a little example. I don't want to get stuck too much. I just want to kind of show you what it looks like. Um, Uh, just just to give you an idea because uh, obviously what you can um what you, what you could see okay be quick uh what you could see damn i forgot what i was going to say <laughs> um yeah, yeah thank you break out in song um this is just the idea of uh, a big step of moving away from these arrays that we've talked about you know the big n matrix um so castle had this hierarchical structure um, and so now we've moved away from that. Um, oh yeah, uh, my, my friend sent me this the other day. It was uh, Double Brown Beer sponsored uh, the Auckland Iron Man. That was pretty good. Like perfect isotonic drink, you know, tonight. Keep hydrated. You might be able to do an Iron Man. Um, so pros, so talking about this, this general, generalization is, um, so obviously it's good in the fact that, you know, there's a lot of different things you can set up. Um, and the other nice thing is, you know, if caveat, if it's written well and you present this to like a working group or, you know, management, then I think if you get kind of the language right, um, digesting of these kind of models becomes quite nice. Um, and so this, this scary black box concept uh, goes away a bit. Um, negatives is we're talking about like these car these wrappers to kind of translate between, but obviously that doesn't that concept can't work here because everything's user defined. You know, um, you couldn't really create an R wrapper um, to kind of go from Castle Two to uh, SS um, because you know somebody might spell a letter wrong. Um, so it's kind of I think a bit of a negative. And the other one is. Within, within classes, we, we do a lot of error checking on what you should and shouldn't do for a process, but we haven't, there's no strict uh, restrictions on how you configure a model. There's a lot, of, um, a lot of test cases, a lot of, yeah, a lot of that we haven't followed. So you can actually still do silly models and also just create categories that you never actually use anywhere. So it's the, the, these are the like, negatives of flexibility. I mean, anyway, just to finish, I just, there are kind of a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Well, just possibly lead into a discussion, um, which was regarding, uh, you know, having all these minimizers. There was one case where um, I, I tried to kind of pour in Stan, but one thing that I've kind of come across is in, in the ideal world, you keep your software so flexible and free that, you know, we can plug in any future uh, third party libraries, but often a lot of these third party libraries like Stan have been developed specifically for their, and some of their kind of coding paradigms don't easily slot in to Castle 2. Um, and so that's kind of pushed us more to go down the route of like what Cole did with ADMB and so kind of, you know, rewrite Kind of your no U-turns algorithm. I just try to try to cheat and just ask uh, Stan, uh, Stan C plus plus libraries. Um, uh, oh yeah, so this one is more just kind of stepping back and looking at the Castle Two project. You know, uh, we, uh, last CAPM I talked about it, and it hasn't. We haven't kind of released a official. Um, and so you know, I think you know we don't have. Uh, like Rick, who's like amazing and does all this work um, on the program. And I think we've had kind of probably struggled with retaining staff and, and fund, you know, just which we'll probably talk about tomorrow. Um, these are kind of some of the things that I think if you look back, these are some of the issues or, or things that have come up, which maybe have uh, 
uh, stalled, stalled this idea. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, you know, the, the, the second one was just, I, I don't want to start a debate about, <laughs> you know, Frequentist versus Bayesian, but, um, you know, sh there's a lot of work that goes into plugging in uh, MCMC algorithms and uh, Laplace approximations. And so, you know, do you want to have the super being that does it all? Or, I mean, under the underlying kind of process, a lot of our stock assessments, the underlying kind of process dynamics won't change. And um, so this is talking about the back end, but, um, you know, do, do, is that, do you want that? I don't know. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that was it. <laughs> um, thanks, Craig. Is there any questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just for my curiosity. Um, I looked at, when you were showing your file with the, the cup regulation, there was, uh, you, you seem to be setting up uh, a maximum and a minimum age, a maximum and minimum length for, uh, for the whole simulation. Is that, is that the right interpretation? Because you, have, you, have then you, have, you then have the possibility of splitting up the, uh, the uh, units by sex and species and area. So uh, isn't it rather cumbersome to have that in, in a single file? I mean, if you ha would, would like to have have uh, say different ages or different size ranges for these? For each partition, for each partition element. Yeah, for each partition. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think Scott set up the code so it's, it's it, there is the possibility to extend that, but um, I just don't think it's been well developed. Because basically what you can think of as a partition element, um, because we just do a lookup to it, basically it's a class with whatever information you want. Um, where it becomes very complex when you go there is then obviously all your functions that operate on the part like age or your age functions need to be aware that they're not reading out of memory and uh, so i think it's easy to have in, in the concept but then once you start kind of iterating over all these different vectors of ages of all your partitions you just have to be quite clever about your implementation of kind of your process <coughs> equations, functions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's well. We haven't made that, that currently as it is. It's just a single age and length structure for all, all the same. Yeah, when the reason why I'm asking is this is reminiscent of the, uh, the gadget uh, setup files where you just separate these thing, things by stock or partition or whatever you have mm, mm, mm. and then then you can have, then have arbitrary settings for, for each stock but then you can define link, links between it between mm. all of them yeah i um i just don't think anybody's kind of used it in the multi i mean it's set up but I don't, it hasn't been used in anger so i don't that, that hasn't meant there's been no development and really okay any other questions no. Yeah, Craig. Oh, I got one. So we've seen your uh, input file. What, what what does the output look like? What format are you using? Um, well, it just spits out to a text file. Um, it's kind of a bit ugly. <laughs> no, just uh, just a text file. Um, I can I can show you. Um, what have we got? Um, so you can control what I, uh, you can control what you want report. You can ask what it wants to report, but um, you know this is asking. This is your partition. So these are um, your categories, and then your your numbers at age. Um, but I, I've kind of uh, spec'd out the output, or not me, but the team, so that basically. I don't often just look at the output file. I just go run a model straight into it and we've got an R package which just absorbs this into an R object and I just look at everything in R. So it might, that's why there's these um, kind of funny identifiers because this tells R kind of, you know, what's this, what's it about? Um, so I often don't, it might not be the prettiest output file and you can see it's quite large. Um, 
Um, uh, so like this is the output of the recruitment. So these are like our year class, year class parameters and the SSB recruits and stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I usually don't look at, I just go straight into R and then view everything in R. So um, Craig, I got a, I got a question. Um, in uh, TMB, right, basically what, if I understand it correctly, what TMB is doing is it's evaluating the function and it's creating, it's doing that using a flux approximation if it has to and passes back the value of the function, the gradients and stuff like that. Um, and so therefore it can be used for anything within R. So it can be used for MCMC, you can, any MCMC routine, any um, minimizer and things like that. Have you thought about trying to turn Castle into something like that where it just produces a the same sort of thing, the, the function value and the gradient, so that you can then hook it into other um, MCMC or yeah. uh, minimizers without having to program them yourselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, in principle, because, yeah, you just create kind of an interface of R where it says, give me parameters and return an objective <coughs> function. Um, but and we, we haven't even, no, nah, we've been more focused on uh, self self contained just bring in to um, bring in minimizers and to do yeah that's all, that's kind of how castle two has been set up I don't know what it's like to get an executable to talk to R uh, yeah okay any other yeah and Nick yeah thanks a lot Craig um, just if you have the capacity there for species stocks and sex partitions and growth morphs and um, that that is a capacity to produce a really large complicated model. I wondered if you have any plans in the development for any multi threading to try to deal with computational intensity uh, from that structure. Um, I mean, Scott was talking about threading the optimization problem out. Um, I don't, we haven't really looked at threading out <coughs> um, processes um, and whatnot. And there's probably a lot of work that could be done. Like for example, you guys multi-fan, you've done a lot of optimization for like the age link uh, matrix conversions and stuff. And so I imagine if you kind of put equivalent multi-fan into this type, that because we haven't spent, you know, the hours and hours that you've done and optimizing that specific um, functionality, you know, yeah, there's a, yeah, a lot more that can be done. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you.